Hi, everybody. Happy Monday. I'm Chris. I'm Steve. <laughs> We're with Eat Walk Learn. We drop a video every Monday. Give us a like and subscribe. This week, it may be the most boring topic ever or the most interesting topic ever. We're talking about walking and shoes. Shoes in our nomad life. Yeah. Um, we get probably asked whenever we post something anywhere on the web about what shoes do you wear in nomad life, it gets like 9 million comments about what people are looking for and so on. So this video is about all of our walking in our shoes. So let's yeah. get started. Yeah, let's start. Okay, so first of all, um, I feel like I'm a little bit of an authority on walking shoes. I had a website in Denver called um, Denver by Foot, and I was known as the Denver's Urban Hiker. And I did a lot of articles, and a lot of people interviewed me about hiking, urban hiking, and so on. wrote several books. I've got four books out about hiking in Denver or around in the environs, and um, I definitely... I have probably worn every pair of shoes that REI sells. So I feel like I'm authority. On the other hand, I'm also getting foot surgery and knee surgery here in the next year uh, because of overuse of my knee and my feet. So anyway, um, I feel like I'm a, an authority. I've written about it. I've also reviewed about it. I'll put some links down below of different shoes I reviewed. Um, and all the shoes we're going to talk about today, we will put links below for the model and the URL on where to get those shoes. So if you miss it in the video, no worries, just look below. Okay? Yeah. Um, so first off, we're going to, um, we both wear, uh, Steve's got a, a Fitbit, I think, and I've got a Garmin. And we don't necessarily track our steps every day. We're not after step goals, but we do they look at them and it's always kind of interesting. At the end of the day, we kind yeah. of like. Yeah, yeah. I'm always surprised. It's like, you know, it, it's, you know, 11 o'clock in the morning and I'm like, oh, I'm at 10,000 steps. How did I, <laughs> how did I walk that much? And what we've also learned is I walk about 10% more steps than Steve does every day, uh, consistently. So I don't know if that's my shorter stride or I yeah. walk more, I walk like I talk or. <laughs> <laughs> she runs circles around me. <laughs> so that's always interesting to compare those numbers. But, um, here I'm going to show you some sh uh, screenshots. So the first screenshot is, uh, my average uh, steps over the past year. So we're coming into our nomad anniversary, which we'll talk about in a couple weeks. And I just want you to see kind of how the steps have increased over time uh, or, well, you can see what the pattern is. And then in particular, I'm going to point out this past April and you can see that my lowest step day was about 4,500 steps and my highest step day was 22,000 with an average of about 13,000 steps. That's kind of a yeah. lot of steps. Yeah, the forty five hundred day was probably when your battery died on your on your watch and it stopped counting. <laughs> right, right. But I mean, we do take like office days, but even office days where we're sitting at home is a forty five hundred step day, and that's usually maybe we're walking a dog or something that goes along with that. Yeah. But anyway, so the point we're trying to make is that in nomad life, walking and your shoes are a big, 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 big part of your um, strategy, and also because you've got. For us, two carry-on suitcases, the real estate in our carry-on suitcases is a premium for shoes. Yeah, and I, well, yes, um, yeah, we don't have a lot of space for shoes, but I also want to add that that's really part of our of our thing is to um, to be more sustainable, to you know not take cabs and and you know Ubers when we can walk it, um, to learn more about the communities by you know walking them at a slower pace and really enjoying the places that we're going to instead of trying to get speed through them as fast as we can uh you know in a cab or in a bus so uh so walking is a big part you know we eat walk learn <laughs> not eat ride the bus and learn <laughs> although we do ride the, and actually we even in the cities where we're riding buses a lot we still walk a lot because you got to walk back and forth right to the bus stops and so on um, i'm also going to put a little chart up here um and it shows you kind of my own personal uh formula i use for figuring out which shoes I'm going to pack. It's my real estate to carry on luggage uh, strategy of the the heavier the shoe, the more I better wear it. Or the lighter the shoe, the least I need to wear it in relation yeah. to the to the square footage or the square inchage. The square inchage? A word? No, I don't know. Square inch. But I feel like we need to do a spreadsheet on this. <laughs> okay, so anyway, starting off with the shoe I wear the least, that is... And we're going to go every other, I think. So that's this shoe. So I have this little strappy shoe. This is the Blowfish Malibu. I like it because it's got this little decorative thing and it's metallic and it's lightweight and it's thin. It packs easy. I wear this for like the special nights that we go out, 
which is not often, but like when I need something a little bit cuter than a pair of walking shoes. So that's the shoe. Do you have a comparative to this? Yeah, I do not have a comparative to that because this is my ugliest shoe. <laughs> uh, this is not a, you know, go out on the town. This is my Keen Sandal. Love these shoes because they are rugged. Any kind of terrain, water, heat, beach, this, this, is, this is the go-to shoe when, um, when, I, when I know I'm really going to be you know, in a, in a tough terrain, maybe walking through creeks and puddles and, and uh, you know, that kind of thing. This is the shoe. And one of the things that I really love about Keens, if you're a Keen lover, they've got a really wide toe box. I really need that for, for my particular feet to have a lot of room for my toes. And uh, this provides that. It's got uh, a great uh, insole that I'll talk a lot about a little bit more, a little, a great arch. And it's the, you know, the ruggedness of the bottom of the soles of these feet, of these shoes that, that really make the difference. So Keen sandals are uh, not pretty, but they definitely do the job. And what, what kind of foot do you have? Is it thin, narrow, wide? Well, the thing that the, it's uh, a wide toe area <laughs> and thin in the middle, I guess. I don't know if my, my particular feet are that uh, unique. Um, but um, my arches is the toughest thing about my foot, and I'll let you introduce your next shoe, okay. and I'll talk about my arches. So my, my shoe that does what Steve does is also a Keen. Talk about ugly. This is the ugliest. This is um, it's very similar to Steve's in that it's got that rugged bottom. Um, it's, it's waterproof, it's durable, and so on. This is the Keen Arroyo for women. They don't make it anymore. I actually had to go to the global Amazon site to find this shoe. They do make this in men's. What is great about this shoe is it's got a removable insert. So if you wear inserts, you can put them in here. Um, Steve's gonna talk about his inserts or inserts. I use the insert that Steve's gonna recommend. I put it in this shoe and I got blisters. So that didn't work for me. But this shoe, I love it. I'll be, and I wear this in the situation Steve's talking about. We're going for like a, a mild hike on the trail. Not like a, a mountain hike, but you know, a, a mile, maybe an urban hike with some trail or through the desert or something like that. This is the shoe I love. I, I wear this shoe the second most amount of times, probably three or four times a month. It depends on, but because of my knee and my foot, I don't wear, we're not doing a lot of the activities that we require this shoe right now, but I expect as soon as my knee and my foot get healed, I'll be wearing this shoe a lot more. What's next? Yeah. Well, so, you wanna talk about your inserts? Yeah, so let's, let's talk about that. So one of the things that I that I discovered uh, about 12 years ago when I started training for a marathon is that uh, you know I'm really susceptible to foot pain and uh, and shin splints and uh, leg pain and all of those things were solved almost instantly when I got the right insert when I got the right. Uh, oh, we need to insert in here. We are not giving you medical advice, legal advice. We're not lawyers. We're not doctors. We would just play them on YouTube. So. Just for me. Just <laughs> this for me. is the solution. Uh, this, is, this, this brand is, is from uh, Walk Comfy. Again, I'm not giving you any kind of medical advice, but originally I went to a podiatrist. We did all kinds of studies and, and, and tests and money, money, and, money. money and, and to, to get custom insoles. And then I found that I could just buy almost the identical thing uh, on uh, Amazon. We'll so put again, the link we're not below. there. But the secret uh, to these, if you've got any kind of uh, plantar fasciitis or anything like like I do, is this metatarsal bump. I don't know if you could see that that bump right, right there. Right. I'm trying to get this. It's, that is just a lifesaver for me. And so I wear these in in all my shoes any time I do uh, any kind of uh, distance walking. I've got to have uh, these these inserts, um, and then uh, particularly um, these are these are really inexpensive. There's another thing that's different between Chris and I is that I don't like spending a lot of money on shoes. She'll she'll whatever it costs, but yeah. But uh, these were like these are like okay. low end. Still the things that they are. It's hmm? a Nike a Nike Versa Nike. foam or something. What's it called? Yeah. They're just really comfortable just walking. They've got a flat sole. These are not my hiking shoes. These are my casual, you know, occasional, you know, just just to, to mix it up. They're his uh, date shoes, shoes, too. He, this is his shoe to my That's little my sandal. Date shoes, okay. yes. Um, and, uh, and they're just really they're like slippers. They're super light. They're super comfortable, breathable. Um, but again, I've got to put those insoles in these shoes in order to make them, them work for me. Okay. So uh, my, my, and he, do you work out in these? 
Oh yeah, those are those are like my workout shoes. So, so and this is my workout shoe. It's a Saucony um, Cohesion 13. It's got a foam. Oh, I do wear I do wear the insert the insert that Steve recommend in this shoe. Um, it's got a nice comfy sole. I mean, it's just you know we put them on to work out in the house, or we might find a gym outdoors. We go work on there. Or we go go into a gym. One of the main reasons why I carry a tennis shoe with me is when we subscribe to gyms for subscriptions when we are out traveling and we're a place at a month. Gyms won't let you in unless you've got some sort of athletic shoe on. If I showed up in a pair of sandals, they'd be like, yeah, no dice. So anyway, this is my go-to shoe. And I wear these uh, twice a week, probably two or three times a week. Okay. Last shoe. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? I'll go uh, first. Okay. So this is, this is my favorite shoe of all time, maybe. Um, I did talk about the Chaco Odyssey in my past. Um, I look for... Uh, well, this is the Keen Zero Sport, another Keen. What I like about it, and I love an open sandal. Um, it's it's convertible. It's got this uh, Velcro strap. And what I need, because I'm a clums clumsy and I kick my toes all the time, is a rubber bumper for my feet. I cannot wear like a Tiva sandal because they don't have um, a covered toe. So the Chaco has a covered toe, which is similar to this, and has a, it has a a cover on top but because of the foot surgery I need I can't wear anything on top of the foot either so this strap is a nice and comfortable across the top of my foot I can adjust it it's you know it's adjustable back here it's also got a really good grip on the bottom and these are my go-to go shoes 95% of the time I wear these all over the world I've had them in an army green which wore out those were ugly I got them in this tie-dye rainbow, which I love. I get compliments, believe it or not, on these shoes all the time. People ask me all the time what shoe I'm wearing. I think Keen might be um, discontinuing this shoe as well. I'm starting to see it go out of inventory and only certain colors are available, but that may be because it was in the winter and maybe with the spring coming along, maybe this shoe's coming back. It's the Keen Zero Sport. I'll put a link down below. And your go-to shoe is? Yeah, so we're back to Saucony. So the, the reason that I love love these is uh, this is their, um, it, it's also their trail shoe. I think it's the- Saucony Trail, T, it says. The TR14. Anyways, you know, I love the grippiness of the bottom. So this is is, is similar to uh, like a Hoka in that it's called, they, they call the Versa Foam. It's got a real thick foam uh, padding, really comfortable, really light. But this, uh, the, because it's called, it's a trail runner. I'm not running on trails. I'm walking on trails. But um, walking it's, all through town and yeah, hiking, but, and hiking at but its it's, best. It's just in slippery surfaces, in any kind of, of of normal kind of walking surfaces. They're not they're not like my Denver mountain hiking uh, shoes. Those are my Keen sandals. But for everything else, so I've got these on. Probably this is my, you know, five days a week. I'm wearing these these shoes. Love them. Super durable. Again, it's the 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 uh, soles are 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 hard. They're um, they're not going to wear out fast like like Hoka's seem to wear out just way too fast for me. Um, these seem super durable, super light, and super comfortable. So uh, if you've been following along, we're going to walk the Camino here in about a month. Um, I currently do not have a pair of shoes <laughs> with me that I'm going to be walking the Camino with. Fortunately, my girlfriend is bringing my favorite pair of shoes with me. I actually had owned these before, brought them with me. They took up too much real estate. I ended up dumping them in Glasgow. Lo and behold, she's got the exact same pair that she's not using anymore. So I'm going to uh, use those pair. They're a Hoka uh, walking boot. I'll, sh I'll put a link down below. That's what I'm using on the Camino. Do you know what you're going to use on the Camino yet? Yeah, this is it. This is going to be the go-to for Camino. Okay. Socrates. All right, there we go. So we'll talk more about that in a couple weeks. Anyway, if you have any, what do you wear? If you have a favorite shoe and recommendation, please, please, please put below because, you know, I've got two Keens going out of, out of commission. I'm looking at the Mephisto All-Arounder. I'll put a link for that as well. That's probably going to be my next shoe um, because I don't know if I'm going to be able to find the Keens anymore. If you have a favorite shoe or a shoe you recommend or a shoe you can't live without, please, we're begging you, put a link below because we will check them out as we need to replace our shoes. We replace our shoes every three to four months. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. yeah easily. Because we, I mean, with these, with walking eight to 10 miles a day, these shoes were out really, really fast. So yeah. what are you wearing? Tell us if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. We love you. You can also comment on the facial hair. Yes. This is Steve's Spanish look. <laughs> it's Don Quixote Cervantes.
and my, and my Camino walking look. Oh, he might even get a braid out of it. Braid? No. Yeah, a little braid. All right. Talk to you guys next week.